this is a problem. We're going to fix this today. This has got a huge gap in it. I mean, it's got a 3 8 gap. My saw blade ain't 3 8 So, we're going to take this piece of or Osage Orange and we're going to make a zero clearance insert. Here's how. So the first thing we need to do is clean it off. We'll clean it off with some acetone. Oh, that shit don't like acetone. Just for y'all that don't know, acetone will melt plastic. Now, we're going to lay some tape right down the center. Now that we have it taped up, we need to take it out. Now, if y'all don't know, this particular boss saw has an Allen wrench right here. Now, the reason we put the tape on there was so that it stays the same width. While we take our screws out, and we're going to transfer this to the piece of wood. Now we should be able to lift it right out as one piece. So after a closer inspection of this particular board, so I'm not going to throw it away yet, there's a crack here and it comes right into where my plate will fit and I don't really like that. So I found this other piece of Osage Orange and there are no cracks. These are just some tear outs. I think them will plane out and everything fits nice. So I should be able to get this plate easily out of this particular board so that's what we're going to do we are going to draw around it and then we shot plain. Well, we'll run through the table saw first. That way my planer ended up working so hard. So, off to the saw. I cut this just a shade too wide. I did it on purpose. We'll uh, fit that in after we get everything all worked out. What I'm doing here is I'm going to draw a line. That way when I run it through the planer, I don't have to check it on every single pass. As I pull it out the other side of the planer, I will be able to look at the line and see how close to the current depth I am getting. It just saves a little bit of time and a little bit of measuring each time it comes out of the planer. Now I go over to the belt sander to get that rounded edge on both sides that it has. This is a lot easier than uh, trying to cut it off.
you want it to be very flat you don't want it to miss or have any gaps and you want it to be flush with the plate on the saw so at this point in the project I started to have questions why are these holes slotted how am I gonna slot these holes well I'll explain why here in a little bit but I decided to drill them straight through and it seemed to work out fine having a cross slide vise on your drill press makes it really easy to drill your holes right in a row you can uh, hit the same mark in the same line every time and then when you flip it over to do the other side you can hit the same marks again I went ahead and moved up to a bigger drill bit so I can countersink the bolts and they don't rub on any of my pieces when they go through the saw at this point in the project you want to make sure you've got a good sharp blade take multiple shallow passes and that will help reduce tear out see the reason we don't want any tear out is we don't want to have to sand it we want a good clean cut putting some masking tape down in the area you're going to cut could potentially help reduce some tear out I didn't do this because I didn't think about it but it probably would have been a good idea now we'll take one final cut all the way through from front to back to make sure everything is cut nice and smooth and with that everything nice we'll move on to finishing of course I'm using the oil based armor seal here it's an interior part and after a couple coats and some sanding it's nice and smooth and it has a good protective finish it should last a long time especially being this Osage orange it's a pretty hard wood and should take a pretty good beating for a long time to come so some of you might have this saw this is the Bosch dual bevel glide miter saw now the only things about this saw I didn't like were the dust collection and for the reviews I watched I knew it was terrible now the other thing was this wide gap which is why I made the insert plate I did not realize at the time until I took this plate out which is two plates not one that it does something different than other miter saws do now let me show you now when I bring this down you'll see that there is a lot of room for error but what you don't see is the holes are slotted which essentially means you can make your own or Bosch has pretty much included a zero clearance plate You loosen them up, slide it in, right up to the edge of your blade, and looky there. Now, I don't remember seeing this in any of the reviews, but that's a pretty nice feature if you ask me. So just for snickers and grins, I went ahead and I put that factory plate back in and set it at a zero clearance just to see how well it would do. And then I also ran with the plates all the way out like the factory sends them. And I went ahead and ran on my new plate. I just wanted to see how much better the edges of this three quarter inch cheap plywood would be because it was cheap when I bought it it's not cheap now but I was pretty impressed with the way it came out the tear out along the bottom was pretty good with a factory zero clearance setting 
And it was about the same with my new zero clearance plate that I installed. So I probably could have skipped this whole project. And that is how we're going to end it today. I think it turned out pretty well. I think it's going to last a very long time. And if you don't have a piece of scrap wood like I did in your shop, you can most certainly use the factory plates. And they do a pretty fantastic job as well. This is your factory setting. And this is your zero setting. I mean, that's pretty good. That's all for today. So uh, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Check out this playlist.